Hey, it's the champ. You're watching Spin TV. Here's the This is what's in my bag. This is what I carry in my bag. Hi, I'm Ken Climo. This is what's in my bag. We'll start you guys off with my selection of putters. This is a uh, they're all hard KC AVRs, usually max weight. I have three different amounts of wear on these. One, it's very worn out. I use it for tailwind approaches, turnover approaches, left to right shots, and turnover putts. Then I have one that's not quite as worn in. It's about medium stable. I use it for most of my putting, regular putts, and I use it for some up shots, very straight up shots that I don't want to turn much. Then I have my fairly new AVR I put in my bag, which I use for very stable headwind type approaches, headwind putts, flex shots I can throw with an AVR, turn it over and let it come back a little bit. Very overstable, brand new. I have two specialty discs in my bag. One is a Condor, it weighs 197 grams. I like to play catch before I play rounds with this thing. It's great to warm up, it's very heavy, it flies like a beat mid-range and it's very straight. It's fun to play catch with and it warms you up fast because it's almost 200 grams. And it protects my Sonic which is a very frisbee-like disc. It has like a fastback type top to it and uh, I use this for approaches. It likes, to, it likes to grab the ground really well. It sits where it hits. So uh, I like to use this on slopes and places where I think the disc might roll away if it, if it touches the earth a little weird. It also fits right inside the Condor, which protects it from getting warped in my bag. The Sonic doesn't fit well with the other discs, so I put it in here. I barely ever use either one of these discs, just once in a while. And I have my mid-range selection, which are all KC Rocks. Starting with the most worn, usually mostly heavy weights as well. I, I throw between 177 and 180 on the rock. This one I've had in my bag for probably four or five years now. and. I can start this thing on a big hyzer and it will roll all the way over, finish to the right. I like to sh throw short rollers. I like to throw very tight wood shots with this disc that we have to start with hyzer and flip to flat. The next one is an eight time KC Rock. It's not quite as worn in as that last one, but it's, it's seasoned a bit. And I can throw this with just an edge of hyzer and it will flip flip and fly pretty straight for a good ways and then maybe tail a bit right. I can manipulate this disc. I can make it fly with hyzer if I need to. I can make it fly pretty straight or I can make it turn or roll. I do throw rollers with this disc as well. I throw rocks up to about 400 feet on the roller. And then I have my number three rock which is right about straight. When I throw it flat and level it goes flat and level. And everybody needs to have one of these in their bag. Point and shoot kind of disc. Just throw it and that's where it goes. And uh, I rarely use this for turning shots, but I will throw a slight anti-flex with it. Mostly I throw it for maybe a, just a touch degree of hyzer, maybe two degrees of hyzer out of the hand, flips to flat and goes straight, lands flat. It's a great disc. Then I have my overstable brand new KC Rock. It's an 11 time, it's a beefy one. And I use this mostly for headwind shots or shots that I really want to make sure it's going to go right to left and get around the tree or whatever it needs to do. I don't throw this up much tight hallways. I use the beat ones for that. I use this more for open shots and uh, stable headwind approach shots that are a little longer than AVR length. Now we're moving on to my fairway driver section. I have uh, T-Birds, one Sidewinder, and one Firebird. Start out with the least stable T-Bird. This is an old 10-time KC T-Bird. It has kind of a CE type plastic. It's well worn. And I throw this a lot on tight hallways, kind of like my beat rocks, but a little bit longer beat hallway shots where I want to start the disc with hyzer, have it flip up to flat. And this one likes to tail a little right at the end because it's so worn out. I also like to throw rollers with this disc. Most good discs for rollers are going to be your, your beat up ones, the ones that fly to the right in the air for you. So that's why I tend to choose these for my rollers. My next one is, uh, it's almost a medium stable T-Bird. Flies very straight, kind of like my straight rock. I can release it with a one degree of hyzer and it will go just straight, fly straight and maybe come back just to tail at the end. I use this for a lot of open air shots, shots where I just want to point and shoot, pick out a target and shoot right at it and it pretty much holds its line. I don't roll this disc much at all. It's just not one of my rollers. It's not flippy enough. Then I have an old Champion Edition T-Bird 
This is my money disc. I love this disc for control. I can make this disc work off of a hyzer flip up to hyzer, hyzer flip up to flat, hyzer flip to turn. This disc does a lot for me. I don't roll this one either, but I use this one a lot on tight hallways. This is my woodsy disc here. Have a champion sidewinder. It's also probably almost max weight. I don't use this disc much. I use it when I have to throw a roller that I want to throw relatively flat under a low ceiling and have it turn quickly and get down and roll. Most of the time I throw an over the top rainbow roller for rollers so I don't like the sidewinder much for that because it has too much time to turn hits and rolls to the right. But I do like it on low ceiling rollers and cut rollers where you got to put them down quick. And I have my uh, old school Pro Firebird. It's a uh, champion edition type plastic but it was printed pro back then and uh, it's every bit as stable as anything out these days. It's, it's really durable. They don't beat up very well. And the last one I had in my bag, I had it in there since 2002, and I just took it out about a year ago. So they last about 10 years before they get at all under stable. And uh, this is my really, really go-to disc. And if there's any kind of wind into my face, spike hyzers, it doesn't skip much. It likes to come in and dig and sit where it hits. Uh, it's also good for a nice flex shot. You can start it with a lot of ante, really low, and it will fight its way out of it quickly and get a skip back to the left for those extra low ceiling shots where you got to throw a little left to right at first and finish left. Now we'll go on to the distance drivers. I have one old Pro Wraith. I don't throw this very much. This is my, uh, I call it my water disc. If I'm going to throw a shot in practice or maybe in a tournament where I might want to risk something going over water and don't mind about losing it, I'll throw this disc. I also roll this once in a while. It's a pro wraith. And then we'll go to my uh, roller wraith. This one I rarely throw in the air. This is my, this does most of my rolling for long distances. It's uh, one of the original 12 time KC star wraiths that I ever had. Still got it in my bag and still kind of stable for uh, as long as I've had it. Rolls really well for those big power shots. Throwing this thing over 600 feet on a roller. And we go to my, uh, my medium stable Star Wraith. It's also a 12 time KC. I think it's 171. I chose that one, get a little bit more glide, a little bit more distance out of it. And this has been my honey for the last three or four years. It's been in my bag. It's, it's well warm, but it's still kind of stable. It's, uh, these, things, these things hold their stability very nicely. I use this primarily on hyzer shots, hyzer barely flip shots and just flat throws that I want to hyzer back out. Rarely do I want to make this disc turn right. Maybe if the headwinds, if the wind's in my face, I'll throw it out there almost flat and make, I can get it to ride a little bit right. But uh, that's my money go-to Star Wraith. I use, I use that one a lot. And this one is my backup for that one. It's uh, a little bit more stable because it's newer, but it's very similar in flight. And I have this in my bag mainly just in case I lose that other one. But I will throw this one if the wind's up a little bit and the other one seems a little bit too understable. Then we'll move on to the uh, Star Katana. It's an Eco Katana. It's a 174. Uh, I use this disc sparingly. I, I throw tailwind shots with it that I want to flip with hyzer out of my hand, go out and flip and turn to the right, and then ride a long ways. This thing is a, is a big flyer. It's a little bit squirrely for me, but... Uh, I do use it. I do use it sparingly on the tailwind shots, and I have found some amazing, amazing long shots with this thing. And these are two new ones that I'm checking out. Uh, they're called the Turn, T-E-R-N. They're uh, champion plastic. I believe they're 175 as well. And I was really amazed at the amount of glide this disc has. Uh, you can throw this thing with minimal effort, and as long as you give it a good finish, a good follow through, the thing will glide a long ways. I was throwing them about 65, 70 percent, and they were going almost as far as my 90% uh, throws with my other disc. It was, it, was, it was really cool. But they are a little bit understable when thrown hard. So you really can't throw them hard into a wind if you throw 60 miles an hour or so. But you get a little bit of tailwind or a little tail crosswind to the right, these things will fly forever. And they like to stay straight at the end. They stay very straight throughout their flight after they turn. They, they like to glide and hold their line. They don't have much of a flare at the end. If you, if you get them over and keep them over, they'll finish on that line. I have two of those. I'm just checking them out right now. I got one for backup. They're basically the same. I have one old Pro Destroyer, a PDS. It's a 175. It's got a Phoenix custom die stamp on it. And uh, I use this mainly for 
shots that I really want to rip over on and get just over flat out of my hand and have come back about 200 feet out and start working their way back to the left. It's a it's fairly overstable for a pro destroyer. It's one of the first run ones. It's got a good pop to it. And I uh, really like this disc. I threw a well out here today. And it's really nice to have one like this that you can trust to come back if you, if you rip it over a little bit. And last but not least, I have an Avery Jenkins Star Destroyer in my bag, 175 Star DS. And this thing is really almost too, too much disc for me. I can barely throw it when there's no wind. It's really hard for me to get over to the right at all out of my hand. It likes to come back to the left, but it's a, it's a good disc for if I, have to throw, if I have to throw a low ceiling and the wind's in my face and I want it to finish left, I can pull over on really hard, throw it low, and it'll maintain its angle and then shoot hard back to the left. It's uh, one of the most overstable destroyers I've ever thrown, but that's it. That's what's in my bag. I'm Ken Climo.